Hi, how's it? I just want to come on here real quick and talk about something because I just feel like it's important to do that. Okay, I want to speak out against the kingdom of darkness. Uh, people who belong to the kingdom of darkness. And by that I mean like very deliberately so. As in dabbling in witchcraft, dabbling in dark arts. Listen up, guys. Something in you can tell that you're in trouble. Like, is that basic? You don't get to dabble with dark arts. You don't get to touch the spiritual realm in such a negative capacity and not fear that there very potentially might be a force that is contra what it is that you're into, that counteracts what you do. You have some conviction in you that you very likely are going to be in trouble when you die. You, however, have gotten away with so much murder and you also have been doing this thing to people for so long that for the life of you, you can't even do the mathematics that you are not safe in eternity. You have been involved in what you were involved in and so horrendously demonically possessed as a result that you can no longer operate normally anymore. The Lord is pressing on your chest, telling you if you repent, if you turn from your wicked ways, I will clean you. I will make you new. I will enable you to conquer much like a drug addict that is severely taken aback by the tsunami of the next fix and the next fix. And all of a sudden they give their lives to Jesus and there is no craving anymore. It's a miraculous overnight sort of kind of like cold turkey quitting. The Lord will enable you to conquer if you belong to the kingdom of darkness. Almost cold turkey, if not entirely cold turkey. The, t the, the desire to just keep on getting everything you want using witchcraft, spell casting on anything and everyone that you can meet in the street. Literally, any inclination of envy that dwells in your heart, you just run with it. You just run with it and you go and you cast a spell on that person that you envy. No self-control. Nothing of a brittling thing in you. There is no Balaam's donkey telling you you can't curse those whom God has blessed because all you run on are your demons. You are demonically possessed. And you think people belonging to the kingdom of darkness that insofar as you can counteract what it is that you did to a person with, the, with little charitable acts that you're going to be cool. Listen up. The most satanic industry in the world is the entertainment industry by far. And there are celebrities in there that are heavy into generous acts. They are the biggest and baddest humanitarians in the world. They are very philanthropic. They are extremely altruistic. They keep on giving money. And on top of that, they adopt a lot of babies in this world that would otherwise grow up without much. However, they're very severely involved in dark magic. They are going to hell, hitting the ground running, and they have no interest in repentance because what it is that they've had to do in order to get those blessings in their lives is so taboo and so extreme that in the absence of sticking around in their dark arts, they not only face a life of humiliation for having done what they did, they also stand to be ostracized by their secret societies and they also stand to be severely punished by the kingdom of darkness that basically is holding them on a leash. So they feel like it's a greater incentive for them to stay dark than for them to leave. Therefore, the way that they relieve their guilt from partaking in the fruitless works of darkness is to give, 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 give. They donate millions to charities. They adopt babies that nobody else wants to take care of. You will always find them at the orphanage. You will always find them taking care of disabled children. They are doing this in order to relieve their guilt because they know they have done some pretty wicked things. Some of them have even sacrificed their own family members to the occult. Thieves. Do you understand? These men and women do this because the invisible qualities of God that are in operation are telling them they're in trouble. Their consciences are telling them they're in trouble. They basically have got everything under heaven that they need in order to repent. But they think that they can just brush off their conscience. Literally like, you know, brittle it. Brittle it. With their generous acts. It was my birthday on the 8th of August. And... 
dark man that belongs to the occult that is sitting on my YouTube channel especially. Especially my YouTube channel. You are literally releasing all the wrath of your bitterness on an innocent woman that wanted to love you. But you chose to act a fool. You couldn't even be honest with her about your challenge. And then you prevent the gospel from going out with all of that blood on your hands. That is basically the blood of all the men and women that would be reached by my ministry. You are sitting on the gospel message. My YouTube channel is stagnant in a very strange way. And I keep on looking at it and I just brush my... I try to brush it off while I roll my eyes on some God is going to fix this. And I know that God has power to just make a decision to not let you conquer or prosper to do anything on my channel. I know that God has it. I know that God got this. But God is somehow handing you over to your reprobate state to make you believe that you've actually got me in a bunch. You on top of that, unlike Hollywood celebrities, are always all up in that Bible. Or maybe indeed just like many of these celebrities are, all, are always all up in that Bible. You've got one gathering dust in your house. Like Cardi B is always talking about Jesus. Beyonce is always talking about Jesus. But they're so deeply involved in darkness. And they also have benefited so much from it. That they're not about to truly give their lives over to the Lord. So all they can do is come up with blasphemous tracks in their music. Where they call out the name of Jesus in a very wicked and nefarious alongside licentious way. You are no different from a Beyonce or a Cardi B. You are aware that you are in danger. Desperately. You know that if you were to breathe your last right now, you are going to hell. And so you make like Angelina Jolie and become the biggest and baddest philanthropist under heaven despite having walked in darkness pretty much all your life. You go and you make a, chari a charitable donation to a daughter of God that you are actively bewitching so you can feel better about your state. You think that you can just say the sinner's prayer, ask God to take you into heaven despite being involved actively in voodoo. It does not work like that, my guy. It does not work like that. I try to love you. I didn't respond to your little donation to my account because what am I going to do with a man that is actively bewitching the living delights out of my ministry and then when is my birthday, he feels bad. He remembers my birthday because he was in love with me or maybe still is in love with me. Completely decided to ghost the living delights out of me. Was very immature about what information he came into and as a result of that made a decision that I'm not going to move and I'm not going to go anywhere and now you have sent me money. You sent me money. Do you know what I used that money for? I bought a video editing software that's going to make it easier for me to publish my content faster because I'm really struggling to get work out right now iMovie has got a million restrictions. So I purchased the Filmora 9 package and it's made my life significantly better, significantly. So I should be able to upload and update more content per day or pretty much catch up with the backlog that I'm in. So I won't deny that the money that you sent me has done an amazing, miraculous thing. I asked the Lord for help with my ministry and I told him that I'm really struggling to catch up and I'm, I'm backlogged. And so he gave me Filmora 9 through you. However, you are still going to hell. You literally have... It's written in God's word that there is a, a, a compul... A compul... A component, sort of a component. A, a small section of people um, in this world that are going to, in and of themselves, lead people into the kingdom of heaven while being shut out. Lord, Lord, have I not prophesied in your name and in your name did many mighty miracles and in your name cast out demons. Depart from me, work of iniquity, I never knew you. You were busy with witchcraft. The very woman you were bewitching, making sure that she can't come up for air... She can't get her channel up and running. You then send her money because you feel like trash that she's spending her birthday all by herself. And you are making sure that I'm going to spend my 39th birthday on my own. My 40th birthday on my own. I did a video where I was crying, lamenting that my eggs are getting wasted. That my whole future is getting wasted. You watch stuff like that. You feel bad. You feel guilty. And then you send me a meager little hundred dollars. I don't even know what that even means to you financially. But even in your miserly contribution... To a Christian that is suffering, understand that that 100 meager dollars you sent me that got converted into like what a thousand three hundred four hundred rands. Know and understand that I should be making per day about five to one thousand dollars. 
and yet I am stagnated where I'm at right now being given $100, never mind every day, but on my birthday, by a man that claimed to love me and now he is pushing the living delas out of my life. Get out of my ministry. Get, I literally get off my chest. But if you won't get off my chest, take this as a warning. You are bloodthirsty. You do not get to send me death curses and then on my birthday, gift me. What are you, some creep? You, are, you literally operate exactly like those people who hold hostage innocent women in their basements while sleeping with them for years, making babies with them, but you feel guilty. So every so often you buy them food, you give them everything they need. You buy them tampons when they're on their period, but let her go never. Let her go never. I am a hostage in your basement and you keep on giving me little glasses of water to drink. Stop sending me money. I don't want your money, it's dirty. But I understand that if you insist on sending it, I'm going to use it to improve my ministry. But it is in your best interest to stop sending me money because you are patronizing the kingdom of heaven and yourself. You're going to hell. It's that basic. You are condemned. You are not going to be okay in, in, in the sight of God. The fact that you even keep on reading the Bible is problematic. I am not going to write you an email. I am not a little doggy dog. I'm not a beggar. I'm not a hobo on the side of the street that you can drop $100 into the like guitar case off because you feel bad for them. Last time I spoke to you, you ignored me. You slapped me with a silent treatment and then you sent me money on my birthday. I don't want your money. It was an insult. Don't ever send me money again. Get off my chest. And if you won't stop with your voodoo, understand. God is going to give me freedom. I don't need you to stop. But I am sending this message out to let you know that if you don't stop with your nonsense, you are going to be neutralized by God in the worst way. And I mean as in day before yesterday. My ministry is sitting stagnated, going nowhere with you having blood on your hands of everybody that will be getting reached by, for Jesus, through my ministry. Because of you. You're in love with a woman. Well, you should have loved your life enough to keep yourself on the straight and narrow that you might indeed one day be in a position to embrace her as a wife. You can't take me now because you went and ruined your own life. Now let me go live mine. But if you don't want to, it's okay. You don't have to. But this here is your final warning. Your blood thirst is not going to be eradicated by you giving me a hundred mega dollars on my birthday. Stop. I'm out.